What's good? What's good? What's good? Muria Zimbabwe. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Connection our Studio 7's our very own youth program that targets tackling anything and everything youth related. Muria Zimbabwe, Ndino Mkamchere Mchongwa Chaduche Wechitiki, Ushelo Di Connection, Muineni Maiko Hobe. Welcome, 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 Muria Zimbabwe, to the Connection Studio 7's very own youth program. That's how it's tackling anything and everything youth-related. Unfortunately, Muria Zimbabwe, we're unable to give you this program live. As per usual, due to COVID-19, we're coming to you from my apartment in Washington, D.C. On Tuesday, the 15th of September, 2020, Muria Zimbabwe, I'm your host, Michael Hove. COVID-19, we're all working too. Nonetheless, we are here here on The Connection with your boy, Mike Hove. Tonight on The Connection, we continue the discussion on COVID-19, coronavirus. Joining us is going to be Dr. Tinotendas Memeza as we tackle the rise in COVID-19 cases. But we don't just look to end the conversation there. We also look to touch on another discussion, Muria Zimbabwe, a development that happened in the nation last week. Uh, last week, we uh, witnessed the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, ZAC, as many know it, uh, launched an online whistleblower platform uh, which uh, will allow Zimbabweans uh, to report uh, corruption or crime anonymously on their pay pages. Uh, you'll be able to use your cell phone. Is this going to help in the fight against corruption? We look to hear more from the nation's youth. But first up, Chiroireche coronavirus, COVID-19. According to John Hopkins University, over 29,306,000 people have contracted a coronavirus worldwide. Approximately 930,000 people have died due to COVID-19. And some positivity, 19,880,000 have recovered. So the numbers again, worldwide figures, 29,306,000. Uh, have contracted COVID-19 worldwide. Approximately 930,000 people worldwide have uh, uh, died due to COVID-19 and uh, positivity uh, 19,880,000 people worldwide have recovered. These figures are changing by the minute. So by the time we go on air, once again, this is a pre-recorded program. By the time we go on air, these figures most likely would have changed. According to the most recent tweet issued by the Ministry of Health, in Zimbabwe, we currently have over 7,531 7, cases, I apologize, 224 are dead, and approximately 5,700 people have recovered. So for those watching on our stream, as usual, you can see the figures on the stream. The latest information released by the Ministry of Health, it unfortunately does not show the cumulative amount of tests that have been conducted to date. However, it highlights that 349 PCR tests were conducted yesterday, and of those 349, five cases uh, came back positive, 12 were reported recovered, and thank Mudimu, thank God, zero died. So those are the figures. One more time in Zimbabwe, uh, once again, the figures stand as uh, 7,531 COVID cases, uh, 224 dead, and approximately 5,700 recovered. So as you see from the data shown, uh, the gap between people that have contracted coronavirus and people recovering from COVID-19 is closing. We've reported about this for a couple last couple of weeks, and it seems as though it's progressing. Without further ado, Muria Zimbabwe, let us head over to our conversation that we have with Dr. Tinotendas Memeza, whereby he highlights uh, what is causing this rise in COVID cases, and we touch on other issues that are COVID-related in Zimbabwe. Let us head over to Dr. Tinotendas Memeza. I think... Um... Yeah, the numbers are increasing as expected. Uh, the deaths, uh, because the numbers are increasing, you also expect an increase in the number of deaths. Mm -hmm. But also, on a positive note, the, the number of recoveries are also right. good. Mm -hmm. So, I think what we're just noticing is just uh, the trend of the virus, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is all, uh, rising, but in a sense, it's being contained uh, as a result of more people recovering. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, another trend that has been noticed uh, throughout the world that most people actually recover right. from the right. Um, now, 
I've always been curious because there's been so many theories around COVID-19, amongst them being the change of seasons, that when some in some places when it's summer, apparently the numbers don't go up or they decrease, and vice versa when it's winter, apparently that's when they go up. In Zimbabwe, is this? do you think that this trend is applicable? Um, in, in, uh, in, uh, like in theory, uh, mm-hmm. it, it might be mm-hmm. uh, in the sense that, uh, we can note that in Zimbabwe this year, we had a short winter, right? Uh, that wasn't, uh, as long as expected. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, one thing about the coronavirus, it's, it contains a fat layer that has a protein, uh, on, on the center, a protein RNA DNA. So what happens is UV light. Uh, is said to destroy the pro- the fatty coat, mm-hmm. uh, which is sort of like the protective layer of the of the virus. Mm-hmm. So more exposure to UV light than uh, the destruction of the virus. Mm-hmm. So in theory, it actually does apply to say uh, when it's summer, uh, the virus doesn't spread as as much as it as it does in winter. So in theory, technically, as a country, we've been at the mercy of the summer. Exactly. It's okay. actually Africa, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the whole of Africa, because the, uh, the, the, the weather patterns in Africa are mostly uh, sunny. Right. So now, if we take a look at what's happening in other parts of the world, um, you know, as other parts of the world now enter into winter, Um, Some places are starting to get hit by a second wave of coronavirus, um, Mm -hmm. and that's led to them now going into another lockdown, just as they thought things are getting better. Um, Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, it's flipped. Uh, We're slowly starting to ease things out. People are slowly, you know, the conditions of the lockdown are also being loosened. People can travel and so forth. Before we touch on the traveling aspect, um, as a country, do you think we should always keep a plan uh, to ensure if anything come, happens, do you think we need a second wave plan? Definitely, we do. Uh, because the, the thing is, we don't, we don't know exactly. Uh, we're still studying the virus, so we don't know its patterns. And sometimes the virus tends to mutate. Mm-hmm. So it, it, the first wave, it might come and just acclimatizes the environment and so forth. Then it actually mutates and then starts to affect people as it develops a protective mechanism and against uh, whatever weather patterns and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we should always be prepared uh, for a second wave, whether it is the virus uh, just multiplying or the virus itself mutating. Mm -hmm. So I think there should always be plans uh, to to, to be prepared for a second wave either way. Mm -hmm. I am curious, though, what is the difference between uh, influenza and COVID-19? I'm thinking of the explanations, and they seem to be part of the same family, but how is that one is more lethal than the other? Um, it's actually the, um, they're similar, but not the same. So if you see how influence, do you know about the flu pandemic that happened long back? Right, right. It was really lethal, and about 50 million people died uh, mm-hmm. during that time of the of the flu pandemic. So... But over time, uh, you develop protective mechanisms against it. Uh, Your body changes uh, structurally and to fight against it. You develop immunity against it such that it becomes no longer lethal. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was. So it's the same sort of pattern that coronavirus is now just starting out. Mm -hmm. It's lethal. Mm -hmm. But over time, you will see that we will develop uh, immunity against it and resistance against it such that it will be li- like what we do to flu, it will be, corona will be the same thing. So it's more to say that our bodies um, restructure and also to try to get immunity over time. Mm-hmm. But uh, as it stands now, since it's a new virus, that's why it's, uh, it's bombarding us as it is. So now, in, in such a circumstance, um, is is it necessary to go with the whole preventative measures that we're doing instead of just exposing ourselves up until we retain some kind of tolerance? Well, it's it's good to go with because we are seeing, we are looking at the acute stage. Uh, people will die, right? <laughs> so we, right. Don't want, we don't want people to die. So it's good to actually uh, get preventative measures, mm-hmm. and then if um, a vaccine 
uh, is, is found or is discovered, that will help uh, boost immunity. Well, sometimes, uh, so how vaccines work, that they take a dead uh, coronavirus or a live attenuated, so something that is not as deadly, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's injected into your body, then you develop immunity naturally mm -hmm. again. So it helps to speed up that sort of process that we might develop over time. So, so it's actually good to continue doing these preventative measures. Mm -hmm. Although some, uh, some theories are saying we, some people have already developed herd immunity to mm -hmm. say you have naturally developed immunity against it uh, just through the exposure. Right. But we don't, want to we don't want to risk people dying uh, that uh, might not uh, develop that immunity. Okay, he said some uh, doc, and we touch on the lockdown restrictions being loosened, and also the recent announcements from the Ministry of Sports, which will make a lot of people happy. Um, that's about to be in a room. Um, Tuesday, we're wondering if I'm sort of people who quit up with numbers, they want to battle into the check on a virus. Many of them, my number, it was it is expected. Could you my number? No, for no, no, she quit on a year to sing it. I could test our money. We are Van Wagawanda, Vaguti, Fambe, Fambe, Nikaya, Vorika, Sagamanamba, and we expect to rise. But on a positive note, Rugona Kuti is, although my numbers are to rise, I want to recover. I got one day. And the Van Warkufa, although Varkuetzera, I say I was Kuetzera, my link, says I got a project on the Nemanamas Cocota. Saka tsunoti uh, zuguradi za kutiwa na wakawanda wariku wa na uu tachuo na we coronavirus asi wakati wandia wariku recover, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. To chiba taka jumo jupi tika kune zimwe nyika pasiro wase truko na uu zimwe nyika ayu watakto pinda busy jwe kari wako tukira kuye ku lockdown kwa wangu wa mbotiza. E, ne maka yuku wako roo wa jwe kari ni coronavirus wanzi paka wakaru wane wei wani yuku changa. Why mm. is all my lockdown restrictions says that you get Zimbabwe? A Vachitaro, coronavirus, Pava Raja, Kari. A Nemo Andre, you Mungatu, a Senica, yes, Zimbabwe, to Fano Tarisera, who sang a Nedam to Garakapana. I think says Zimbabwe to Nofana Gongo Garataka Gazrira. Could no one saw on a second wave uh, in uh, Nina Gut Tafura Nika, Vanuagu Famba Famba, Saga, this was no one saw with the coronavirus. We say, you know, virus patches, I know, can saku chinja. He should protect against Zuva, Ratsuit, Raganyanya, Africa. Saka inuita, you know, you know, adapt. He should also know, can saku tiriso, can saku rama, Tungo Ayakati Rebe. Saka so fana kungo ramba tagango, Kadrira, se 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 if if anything is to go the meta better second wave mm -hmm. all right doc now let's uh wrap up our conversation here uh lockdown restrictions you are touching on the fact that they've been loosened um recently we we heard cabinet and the president himself announced that people can now travel within the country um now as people travel of course the number is still increasing the amount of deaths is still increasing what advice would you have for them to ensure that they don't contribute towards the spreading of covid in the country oh, okay um, I would say uh, if we can try to minimize um, travel by all means, uh, that would be good uh, mm -hmm. up until we have really get a, gotten a hold of this uh, pandemic. But uh, as now the, the nation is open to travel and so forth, we should always uh, practice the things that we've been uh, talking about uh, each and every other week to say mm -hmm. let's practice our social distancing, our strict hygiene, uh, washing of hands and so forth, so as to minimize the spread uh, of this pandemic. So we should always uh, uh, avoid uh, unnecessary, unnecessary travel, mm -hmm. by all means, uh, just to sort of uh, uh, manage the situation that we have. Because as Zimbabwe, we don't have the, enough resources or capacity to mm -hmm. contain a pandemic it is to actually become flu full blown in Zimbabwe. So we should uh, practice uh, the, the, the principles that we have been discussing throughout uh, this. 
Doctor Tino Tendas Memesa, Ubonga, Udogotela Tino Tendas Memesa, Ungena Gushello Lutu Labasa Kulayo. Thank you so much to Doctor uh, Tino Tendas Memesa for taking time out to join us here on the connection as usual. Uh, you heard him there uh, touching on COVID 19, the increase in COVID 19 cases, as he mentioned, is to be expected. So, just a recap as we speak, the amount of figures stand as this uh, over 7,531 uh, COVID cases uh, in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, uh, 224 dead, and approximately 5,700 people have recovered from COVID-19. But now, COVID-19 in Zimbabwe has become a very strenuous fight in terms of resources. Some places currently uh, are still gathering resources and, and, and trying to attain donations in uh, terms of uh, food, uh, PPE, uh, computers, and different uh, things that will all help towards the fight against coronavirus in Zimbabwe. Let's head over to Bulawayo, Gondu Tuzia Chunga, where there's an organization called I Am For Bulawayo Fighting COVID-19 that has been working uh, uh, endlessly, tirelessly for the past six months in the fight against coronavirus, helping uh, hospitals in Bulawayo uh, by seeking donations and by providing donations to these uh, different institutions. Last week, they uh, provided another donation to one of the hospitals. So let's head over to a clip that we received courtesy of them, whereby they're talking about their most recent uh, donations. And uh, I am very pleased that today we are here to hand over uh, to the National Reference Lab a uh, refrigerator that uh, was uh, facilitated through Bulawa in my home, a diasporan-based group uh, in the UK uh, that gave us money and uh, based on the needs assessment we had made and our engagement with the team here at the lab, we were able to identify this as a priority need. Um, but also other funds that have come to us, we have been able to install a Jojo tank to help uh, the lab manage to have clean water throughout the season when there's a water crisis in the city. And then uh, we also uh, had two rent uh, that helped us uh, facilitate for the lab to have three computers for them to capture the data of the tests that they are doing. They donated a fridge for us, which will what we use for is for storage of samples which we have done to test for COVID. That's the fridge which they gave us. I think uh, the fridge which we have, it would go a long way because it has got different shelves so that all the specimens which we have received, if packaged cor correctly, they will all fit. I think that's the extra mile it will go in putting all the samples for COVID. Which, was, which we have currently done and accommodate the ones which will come. I am for Blau, are you fighting COVID-19 there? Uh shout out to them for the work that they're doing uh in the bulawayo area uh they've donated three different things uh especially a water tank to help in the fight against water because right now water crisis is a big thing not just in bulawayo but in uh the rest of the country two other places such as harare the nation's capital are also having water problems we're going to head to that shortly but they've donated a water tank to help in the uh the, the water to to help combat the water challenges that they they might face they have donated fridges which are going to be used to store samples and of course they've donated computers which will help uh, in terms of uh, tracing and uh, registering all things coronavirus related now earlier on i mentioned not so long ago i mentioned we would see the water crisis another thing that seems to be contributing we've heard health experts highlight water is very very important during this time but in zimbabwe a lot of places are currently facing a water challenge issue a lot of places do not have water which has led to citizens going out there seeking water uh we received a clip uh, of what's happening going to Tuzetunga in bulawayo uh courtesy of site zenzel and debele who is a uh, part of site the founder of south uh we received a clip whereby he highlights some of the issues that uh, bulawayo is facing so let's head over to that clip so we see what kind of water challenges the city of bulawayo is facing and what's been happening recently that has led to abantu looking for water. The water problem in Bulawayo is um, 
presented a lot of challenges to the uh, residents of the city uh, with people trying all sorts of uh, things to get water. We have seen people digging wells along the uh, streams, bank rivers, sometimes uh, in places where sewage is flowing. We have also heard that in other parts of the western suburbs, people are actually you know, breaking uh, city council water pipes so that they can get water. Today, where we are here is in New Magwegwe, and uh, there is uh, more like a pool pump station uh, or reservoir or mini reservoir of some sort uh, with pipes underground and we see young kids coming in to get water. It is quite uh, uh, risky uh, because anytime if that pit floods uh, these kids can actually drown in this thing. But this also just shows how serious the water challenge is. I think uh, it needs uh, uh, us as the city to work together, but also needs the vigilance of the parents to make sure that they monitor where kids get the water because uh, uh, this uh, substation or water pump, whatever it is, it's not covered. So kids go in uh, to get the water and uh, I think it's, it's, it's actually quite risky. So we, we encourage uh, parents and the city council to actually monitor that while it's people uh, are looking for water, we don't end up uh, losing lives uh, because of freak accidents that might happen. All right, shout out to Zenzel and Debele and the guys from Site for that report there. Zuluganda Balea's Bonella Gampella, Loco Gonzagala, Gobla, Wayo, Muria Zimbabwe, Murkus, Gondraoka, Nemas, so you, which is in Zero Omega, as Riki Tika Kubla, Wayo, Kova, and Chichaga, Mvura. But now the issue of water sources, like I mentioned earlier on, is not just restricted to Kubla, Wayo. Let us head over to Harare to see what's happening in Harare, whereby they're also facing water challenges. Uh, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, uh, Studio 7 correspondent, uh, Ruteno Mawere, was in Epic where she got to speak to some people and got to try on Vura who were looking for Amanzi. Uh, let's head over to her to hear what they had to say about their water challenges. <laughs> This is all happening during the time that the nation is fighting coronavirus. You heard there from some of the residents themselves are complaining about the issue of water. So just as a recap earlier on Maria Zimbabwe, we had a conversation with Dr. Chinochendas Memeza, uh, who was touching on the issue of uh, COVID-19 in Zimbabwe. One more time, a recap, over 7,531 coronavirus cases in Zimbabwe, 224 deaths, and approximately 5,700 people have contracted COVID-19 in Zimbabwe. That's what's happened. Happening. You heard him touching on several different facets, uh, and we also touched on, uh, as you have mentioned, uh, or as has been mentioned by several different medical experts, not just here, Pano Pachirongo Chiluchevich on the connection, but on our several different live talk segments and our several different coverages, and medical experts across the world. Water is a very essential thing because you need to wash your hands. But now, in places like Bulawayo, in places like Harare, Vanuaru Chema, the people are complaining about their access to water. Chirongo D connection, Mwineni, Mike Hove, Silusi, Zinyempela, Mure, Zimbabwe. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we're working from home, and this is a pre-recorded program, so you're not able to join us as per usual. Nonetheless, Tidipano, Pachirongo, Chiruchebe, Chitiki, Ushelo D connection, Lilami, or Mike Hove. For those that are looking to give their input, you can send us a text on WhatsApp on plus one, two, zero, two, four, six, five, zero, three, one, eight. Magatira, Chirongo, Chiruchebe, Chitiki, Ushelo D connection. Zikupanda poe kama nguma wiza, amekwai do artist, aka Mr. Nkulu, miskiwa nge veneki. Guys, COVID-19, abaibiza nge corona, inde kona, pambili nge social distancing, askeze nge zanja, always stay safe, stay home. Last number. Easy, easy, easy machita, easy. 
Shout out to my Wiza, Wiza, Wiza on the beat. Easy Machita, easy Gulula. 2019 is the number to dial if you're looking to uh, get more information on COVID 19. If you suspect that you may be showing uh, COVID 19 symptoms in Zimbabwe. Once again, shout out to my Wiza. Now, let's head over to the second segment of the show, when we're talking about uh, the fight against corruption. Earlier on, I mentioned that last week, uh, the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, ZAC, as many know, know it, recently launched um, uh, an app or a platform, online platform, which targets uh, helping people report corruption in Zimbabwe anonymously. This is going to be online and it's available on their Twitter pages as you keep watching the program. For those who don't know what it looks like, I urge you once again to come to our broadcast on our three Facebook pages, VOA Shona, VOA Studio 7, Nipa, VOA in Debele, soon after our radio broadcast. And you'll see what this app, uh, what this platform looks like. They talk about it constantly on the Twitter pages. So that's what happened last week. But before we head deeper into hearing what Zimbabwean youth have to say, uh, last over the weekend, uh, VOA uh, reporter, once again, Rutendo Mawere, shout out to her, uh, managed to get a hold of uh, the uh, ZAC chairperson, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Lois Matanda Moyo, uh, who kind of gave us a little more insight as to where what led to them creating this platform and of course why is it so important for them as Zach to go online so let's hear from her and then we'll head over to the youth to hear what they have to say about Zach's latest move platform yekuti vanenya ya the corruption vanokwanisa kumhangara vachitexta pa platform iyoyo basinga zika nukuti ya bapapi nukuti ya kagadziru wa kuti ino ngubwa pa same place ma message yesi saka ashu kwa nisiki cherudai waka tresa wakwa nisiku wana kuti ii message ya bapu kwa kuti ya bapu pide kupi saka ya application ili secure inuita kuti wa mangari webu wange waka chengetezu kwa wasinga zo kwa nisiku ti wangateri wa chishungurudu kwa tukutoti tuye ne, ne platform yoyo yo, kangata ona waka wanda wachu ya kusoti nyayati nazu asitochi kakuti tidini tikuta aurire inye edzo zine kuti kuti tikuta aurire ii chunye kwa nisa kusoti zokera na kuti wa mwedo waka mbozimba wa mwaka dai saka tinuna kuti wanu wane e, wane chido shikuru chekutu uwari upere msimbabwe saka wano da chose kuwea ne maripote asiva ingochika ni kuda kuku shunguruzi kwa kwa nga kuripu ni wakuruwe mabasa wa nenge wari uwe wari kuita shu corruption church saka atilotari sila kuti vanu wacha tanga kumangara shaka nyanya shukuru all right, you just heard there uh, from uh, Mrs. Alois Matanda Moyo, a ZAC a chairperson, who was basically breaking down what led to them as ZAC are uh, creating this online platform. As uh, she highlights how a lot of people have highlighted that they want to report crime, they want to report corruption in the country, but they fear the repercussions of that come with them. And so ZAC decided, mm -mm, let's make this very simple for Zimbabweans. Let's create an online platform that allows someone to report crime anonymously uh, to tip off Zach and Zach will be able to act on that. So to hear how effective that is, I decided let me reach out to the youth. We're going to hear from the technology experts. We're going to be hearing from, from our civil society leaders and we're going to be hearing from our legal experts to hear how efficient something like this will be in the fight against corruption. The first person we're going to head over to is the, an interview that I had uh, with Ashton Bumira, uh, who is uh, the director of Youth Forum Zimbabwe. Uh, Ashton uh, touches on the discussion of what Zach is doing, whether or not it's help it whether or not it will help in the fight against corruption and their concerns as the youth of Zimbabwe let's hear what Ashton had to say yeah uh, I think first of all I think I need to you know appreciate yeah, the move which they have taken in terms of you know uh, establishing that uh, tip of you know mobile application but I think I need to be quick to say that you know in Zimbabwe at the moment the problem we have it's not about you know reporting corruption I think we have a problem with the institutions, you know, which, uh, you know, fight corruption. Precisely, SAC, the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. So the problem we are having here in Zimbabwe is, for example, I think SAC, it needs to do a lot, you know, in terms of, you know, gaining trust of Zimbabweans. Because at the moment, I can tell you that we have cases which are actually in the courts. For example, I can give you the, the case of, you know, uh, of Adaya Moyo, the former minister. I can also talk about, you know, Kuwaya, another case. There's also the Mfumira case. So for me, my point really is, in as much as it is important to have platforms where, you know, uh, citizens, they can report corruption. But I think the biggest test 
is uh, with regards to, for example, if there are cases which are in the courts, what is it that the you know institutions which are supposed to you know fight corruption are doing? We also have you know the, the, the problem with our judiciary. It, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people they say, and I think they are correct. They say, uh, Zach, it's not you know uh, independent in terms of uh, the way they discharge their duties. So I would say, on one hand, it is you know a, a, a welcome development that we now have you know a, a mobile application where you know as citizens we can actually report anonymously but i think um, a lot you know needs to be done in terms of you know uh, uh, bringing you know confidence trust you know from the citizens i mean uh, with regards to the institutions which are supposed to be you know fighting corruption mm -hmm. i think that's my, my take. now let me ask you this uh ashton um you talked about zach Zach, as an independent body, their job is to investigate and uh, arrest people uh, and bring them before the court. Uh, if they are using this platform to, because uh, when I was listening to some of the sentiments echoed by uh, the chairperson, uh, my uh, Lois Matanda Moyo, and she was saying she's excited about this development because one of the issues is that people feared. Uh, reporting uh, corruption because they feared the repercussions that at times come with reporting corruption. And so she was excited that people can now anonymously report corruption, highlighting how they feel as an organization allows them to fight corruption better. Uh, you were talking about how the whole catch and release situation, how does that come in into this whole play? Because they would have done their part of investigating and bringing the issue to light. Yeah, I think on that issue, I think uh, the, the the problem, you know, even reading from from newspapers is, you know, some of these cases, you know, they end up, you know, collapsing in our in our courts because of, you know, probably lack of evidence. So I would say on that end, I, I think what is happening is, you know, I don't know, maybe it will be intentional. Maybe Zach is bringing, you know, these cases with weak evidence. So that you know, at the end of the day, even in the courts, you know, uh, the the cases will not you know stand scrutiny, and you know we then end up having you know these big high profile cases just falling away. So in a way, I I cannot authoritatively say uh, that is what is happening. Probably, but you know, as citizens, we end up you know feeling that probably there is a coordination between SAC and also the judicial system here in Zimbabwe. Tumbo bata nia ene rumiro amai eva bumira. Tago na last week zaka itwa ne sanga nore zak vaga parra chirongwa icho chaka na ngai nuku batsira mukurusana ne nia iye uori munyika. Seve chidiki magambo ya upana papa chirongwa mukabata nia iye uori mukata aiwa nia iye uori aneta munyika. Ne ma undre ni mungati dano rubuto roi ne zak no batsira. Dano rubuto roi dano raka na kacha yesu. Because it was no savage dick, Matilan, Matimana, and you guys, one go one Sakuti were reporting. Master was in Gawanik, a Saka is in Donaso, no better, but a banana, Chicago who reporter, and a Kumangara, Snigger Chicago, and the Bozanga Chigar. I see a Gandhi Tauri Mashoko, the city. It was no damns were a Tina Rokno, Zimbabwe, and was go on day. Nerebuti, Iro Sangan Rezaki. Rene Zimania, Matari, Zimania, Zavar, Ungorora, a Vishdiki, a Kawanda, Vanona Sikuti, Ma Batiro Avanga, as Supu Pa, as Gutsi, Sakawana Zut, Nona Sikuti, a Vargunian Reds, and the Apanas or Gunan Soita, Snobatica. So his name. A tiny EO application in Gaway, you put one hang of a star up a wood, but the Kana Eosak is in Gagoni with a Basanemas, a Panashino Bobuna. Is so cruel to say they would say Zak, Nova Nakunke, Chiongorora, that it now the repo, Bagato Manga, now the Kumatari, and Vanangiva Tinas Uchaka, Vajita Chaguru, one of them, Bow, who would get a Jingiva and Kumatari. Our Ningua Chingua Pomera, Mosa, the Kuita, or the Vangiva Chibatwa, in the Vajitos of Pio Mutongo, series with Paris. 
Asi, mungati i decision yes ake reko na uti ndiana nupi wa mtongo ni uti iwa basara ondro kuhungo chagao uombo ni kuhungo renyaya sezu waka itika pana Dr. Obeb Diamo ya zuka itika zukari pana on, ba, na baimbo wea minister eh, mai priska mfumira wea wanu wakuru chayu waka investigate wa waka to sungwa waka to enda ku eh, most nyaza wa zichiru kumatarezo so tichita ura so wari out pa in, yatino tinechiru ngu bail asi nyaza wa zichiru po Saka chii chino ita kutimuti, sewe chidiki muti aiwa za kai skusha na nema uzu. Isusu maone rewe edu sewe chidiki ndeo kuti, tunuona sekuti zaki pa ino itachangu uzo ye umbo, njende za nyaezi kumatari. Esku nyazo hende sa umbo wakazara, umbo wakajeka, jinzi nge zichitika, jaini nge ya piwa. Saka isu tunuona sekuti nyaezi pa zinike zifizo hinda kumatari, nyaezi ikuzo upe zisera zichidona, kana zichita za kwenye mbira kumbiri. Because the Kumatari are running away from the Pasina Umbo Batika. So it's a good idea to see my Zaki. Leo Zaki, can I think it's a good idea? The Ito Ringua Yakariba, but it's a good idea. Wova ne Umbo Wakasa, Angavama, my documents, Angavama accounts, and Inga Jirak is a Fumba Quimari. Ungawa umbo with Zimbabwe, Ninga Zagavaka, Ungawa Umbo with Zim Zagavanda, it's just no good road Zaki. Nova na kunge ishi zoi, kira nyaya izi kumatari. Wajinge wane umbo wakasara. Shinoita izu kutika na nyaya ishinge ya zupinda kudara. Nyaya inenge ili pachena. Bati, iko jino za tuko wana ndezo kuti. E, wana awarungo manjisu kwa wajenda kumatari. Paruku yenda, umbo wapasina. Kwa nyaya zaavo, ziruku zungo pezi sera kusina kwa zino yenda. Hmm, Zuluga ndaba, Muriye Zimbabwe, you're hearing there from Ashton Bumira, Osa Kulayo, Oenta Nganiso, a youth uh, forum uh, Zimbabwe. We are, very, we are showing a pelumbo no ake, maila nangalo, shelo, lwe Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Uh, so for those that are watching our stream, lea zbonela ngempela, Zuluga ndaba, abafisa, ulua, ulua, ulutile hambani, guka si ele zak, uh, gu Twitter, uh, baya pala ngempela, uguti, abafisa, ugu, uh, you know, uh, reporter in Dabas and Koshagalo Hambani, Ebola and Jenny Dega Hamba, www.zacc.online uh, forward slash uh, tip offs. Uh, that is zac.online forward slash tip offs. Alilako uh, Ugu reporter in Dabales is in Koshagalo, I know Nema Sli. Lapa U Ashton Yashon and Peluguti, I, Yempela Yen and Jemusa Kulayo, I. Abe Zak Uyaba Chayla Ishombe Gortwa Uti Ukulu Mendega Munga Meli Emerson Nangakwa mustn't just look for ways uh, of, uh, of of fixing in Dabale in Koshagalo Gortwa Gumele Bazame Ngamandla Bonke Ugulu Ngisisa Lenda Ba E Catch and Release uh, Uguti Yena Ubona Ngani Loko Ugo Kwa Nzagala Ngu Ngeskatsika Tokotela Opetaya Moyo Njalo Uwa Ngu Minister U Onropo uh, Priska Mfumira alai owaboshwa be seteswa itala logu luenko shaga lo, logu chonche maali uh, lesi ndo esu chene eh, uche hai gume, eh, agabo yena njengu sakula ya agatabanga ngen ndaba yoguti bonke bobabe ililaba that we just uh, talked about uh, they are still out on bail we are shonge mpelu uta uchulumende umele azami ngempela angamanja oke wonke to make sure that such cases that are already still in court Hi, they have come to a conclusion. But now let's head over to another uh, young person, an, an entrepreneur, Umnum Zana Uchon Muchenje. Ram Chenje uh, touches on uh, you, his thoughts as a young entrepreneur on what Zach has recently done. Young entrepreneurs across the whole country are all crying about the issue of corruption because the issue of corruption is one of the reasons as to why the state of the economy is currently where it's at. Let's head over to John Muchenje to hear what he has to say about Zach's latest move. Danura Gatorwa ne Zak e Danu Rnofadza e Munyege Zimbabwe takananga na nekurwisa uwori President Edward Mnangako va ano vari on record almost every time vaitaura kuti pasino uwori noti uwori uno tora mari inofana kwe ichandisa for development ichandisa wane vanu ziri pamutemo sati noti suseve chidiki pasino uwori anakati wane Zak rekuti tishkwanisa kuwa uza uwori kukitika na whatsapp numbers avu you know what I'm talking about? Chenjuru kucherezi, chenjuru kukariba. I can report. Niyazi rukitika zowori. 
pasina kuti ndiwe ndawo ya mafusa vari kwarara kuti tinofara chaizvo ndandira vakatora vekurwisa hore e tine huru kuratidza taita nevango vewe chidiki e vanoti dano iri kaire e kuti rishande urumende uye zvesangano rezak vanoti fanerwa kutanga vagadzirisa nyai ye catch and release tipewo maondre enyu pamusoro pezve mashoka aya avari kutaura mukatarisa e zvakuita mukurodi wenyika mazivano vari kuti anenga abatwa ane mhosva anenda kujere shindira nemutongo wanenga piwa nemutomodi wenyika mukaona zvakaitika pana minisa wedu vanga vari pokudhara vavo padaimo vakanengendeka mhosva yekuti vakaita hore pakutenga kwe zvinhu zve covid nomba vatomiswa basa ipapo ipapo semuna mai mpfumira zvinoratidza kuti mukurodi wenyika ane kurevesa e, kwa kuita panyadze kurwisa denda re, re corruption re munyika nyike yedu ina matamzikwa akawanda arimo kurikupudza nema sanctions atakapiwa nevachena asi iso sema Zimbabwe ndikawo responsible tikakwanza kuchengetedza zvatina zvomuno kuti kana mari chinge anzi ndiye kugadzira road kaigadzira road zvichindira nama quotations anenge aripo pasina kuti vano ndutsira mari dzavo pamusoro zvakafana zvakaitika izvi zvekuma mask yekuti mask 1 inozva ndoya kuti 24 dollars idzo dzita kuma 5 sati kuti uori kuti kufaita zvakanaka munyika yedu ye Zimbabwe tinokwanisa kukunda chero masanctions aripo patomboti uori nga kuite ushoma kuti anenga abatwa nga avhari kwe mukati atongerwe jere sevhe chidiki ve Zimbabwe zvi zvatingaita mukubatsira e mukurwisana nedambutsi kwe ratekeshera nyika yose isevhe chidiki tinoti commission yakagadzirwa nemukuru wenyika yakanaka uye iri kufaita corruption but tinoti wose chidiki todo space yedu mukati me board iro re corruption nokuti vechidiki tisita kawanda munyika inoi uye tisa vatungamiri vemangwani so chikumbira uchiri chekuti pawn ko quarter ma board ese ungava ku corruption ku 25% yevanhu vanenge vari mumu ngava vana vechidiki so that no dzidza ku vakuru vanenge varipo uye tinenge tinoonyadza tiri chiona dze corruption saka vamavedu kana vachinge vari mu board Alright, that was John Mchenje, a young entrepreneur. We are showing him Pelu Tai. Yena Ukulumindaka Mongameli Emerson Mnangako, Yena Njengo Sakulai, Ubona Nani, we are seven Zakatalala, Egu Kekeni, Wotubo, Luen Koshagalo, Elizwe Ni. Uh, he also touches on in double a or would see i when i open an any local sand wins why in shangan is a sack i would say about shyla shombe jong was a cool i o uh uchin till in jalo with double a catch and release a city yena uh ule temba logos umonga meli emerson and angakwa uza wulungi sisa loku liku bonan jani sulu gandaba uh Please uh, send us a text via WhatsApp. Who number eighty plus one two zero two four six five zero three one eight. Lisicho pela umbodo enu libona ngani loko kwenzi wa Isaac gula kugu kete na utabalo nkoshagalo elizweni. Ah, you can also write laba baba zabe bugela gu Facebook balani imbodo enu gu kasle tu lvo a indebele. Sakandilo zawa chitarwa na ba John Mchenge wechidiki ah uyeswe anova businessman ah mu Zimbabwe aiwa e ma zinzura me ga muri Zimbabwe vamchenje vachita aiwa e sangano re a Zak vano rovera maoko vari kufara zvekare sewe chidiki vari chivimbo chekuti hurumende yava Emerson Mnangakwa iri kushanda nemazvo mukupedza dambudziko re corruption but now what do the legal experts have to say we reached out to Paidam Saurombe uh, he's a legal expert he is a lawyer under Zimbabwe lawyers for human rights to hear what he has to say about Zak's latest move and whether or not such a move can help uh, in terms of the fight against corruption let's hear what Paida has to say Thank you so much, Mike. The the digital platform being introduced by Zach in the fight against corruption, it is a welcome move. In my view, it will aid in terms of information being brought to the attention of Zach. What, however, I am not sure about is the effectiveness of the platform. What measures will be taken that the information remains anonymous, but at the same time, the information becomes genuine. It is one thing to introduce a platform where you are saying people should come forth with information on corruption but that information also being genuine information which can assist the commission information that can 
aid in some of the cases that uh, have already been put in place to get a successful closure in terms of the processes that are already taking place in the courts. Do you think that this will help in Zimbabwe's fight against corruption? My guess you would not. The fight against corruption in Zimbabwe is not a fight that has been waiting for a platform. It's not a fight that has... Uh, been incapacitated or it's not a fight that has been unsuccessful because of the lack of resources. Uh, But it is one that needs willpower from the politicians, if I may say, to actually fight against corruption. It is a fight that requires dedication. As you would note, we already have statutory bodies that are tasked with fighting corruption in Zimbabwe. It is a matter of willpower. We have heard experts argue that this will not help because the actual fight against corruption in Zimbabwe should come with dealing with the catch and release issue first. What do you think about their sentiments? It is a correct uh, sentiment, as I've already highlighted, uh, that what we lack in our fight against corruption is transforming that fight from being a simply a mere rhetorical issue into a practical issue that we really work on fighting against corruption. It should also not be an issue of the fight against corruption being turned into a political tool to hammer on opponents. As you would notice that currently in our jurisdiction, the fight against corruption has often been abused into going after political opponents. The phrase catch and release, I think at some point in time, it needs to be dissected on what really is meant about it. I really hope that when we talk about catch and release in Zimbabwe, we are not talking about those who would have been found guilty of corruption being granted bail by the courts, but we are talking about the arrests that are made with cases that do not end up being prosecuted and they just have a natural death or they stay in in the courts for years and years and later on you hear that those cases have been dismissed, cases which are brought to court without the necessary investigations having been done. They are brought to court, people are placed on remands for years on end Naturally, they are removed from remand. There are no further investigations that you hear of the cases. With the platform coming into place, without the necessary uh, commitments that we really want to fight corruption and we want the public to assist, I think it then becomes a mere rhetoric, as I've already said. Now, my last question to you, Paida, does the Access to Information and Protection of Privacy Act have any impact on the functionalities of Zach's new platform? Uh, The Access to Information and Protection uh, of Privacy Act, obviously, it will have an impact in terms of the functionalities of Zach's new platform. The information that will be harnessed from such a platform, which will be coming from the public, going to a constitutional body, which is the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, will obviously then be guided by certain provisions of Access to Information and Protection of Privacy Act, in that Zach cannot then go on to release information and, as it were, to prosecute those who they have brought in that information and in that information actually becoming public it will also have to follow certain procedures where you cannot just have that information um, released willy-nilly but it should actually act to aid in the investigations that Zaka would be conducting all right, Paida Saurombe, he is a lawyer there, touching on his thoughts uh, as a young legal expert on what Zach recently done? Tell us your thoughts, Muria Zimbabwe. What's up? Plus one two zero two four six five zero three one eight. But now earlier on, you also heard uh, from uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Um, Lois Matandamoya, the Zach chairperson, who was highlighting that this uh, platform works based on anonymity, saying that you, as the reporter, if you choose to use this platform, you can report your, uh, you can report corruption anonymously, and this is a conversation that will happen solely between you and Zach online how safe can this be i decided to reach out to a tech expert michael Mube, to hear what he thinks in terms of whether or not such, such a platform is safe and how effective uh, such a move would be let's hear what michael had to say um honestly i feel this is the best move uh, that we have uh, needed for quite some time and i think going this way is is the best way to uh, help people to come out and speak out 
uh, in whatever way when there is uh, any misconduct or um, corruption that needs to be uh, exposed. Mm -hmm. Now, so, let's go a little deep into it. You mentioned that you feel it's a positive way. Um, we look at, mm -hmm. for example, the mobile penetration in Zimbabwe. We look at how many people have access to data and so forth and the expenses mm -hmm. behind it. Um, yeah. Is this something that could negatively affect or is, this, is there an impact? What is the impact of that in terms of people now utilizing this way uh, towards reporting corruption? Um, in honest truth, uh, here in Zim, data, we, we cannot neglect that fact. Uh, data is really expensive. expensive. Of late, uh, we've been having a uh, data increase. Um, like within a period of 30 days, you can have something like uh, uh, tariffs being reviewed twice or so in a month. And it's, it's really difficult for majority of people to afford data. But well, um, in town, you can find uh, a couple of free internet hotspots where people can access the internet. Um, it's it's, it's uh, quite a number of spots which are available for people to access internet for free. Right, but is this only in major mm -hmm. cities? Is this across the whole nation? Where is this? Uh, unfortunately, for now, I think uh, from my understanding, it's in major cities. Um, in remote areas, there they are no um, facilities like that. There are no places where people can get free internet. So that's the only bummer that we have uh, concerning this. All right. Now, let me delve a little deeper into your tech mind on this one here. Um, we we, we mm -hmm. were listening to uh, the uh, chairperson of Zuck announcing the mobile application. And the one thing she seems to take pride in is the fact that people will be able to report this anonymously. Um, no tracing whatsoever. It's just a, 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 a relationship between a server of the person's mobile subscriber and Zuck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how safe? is something like that for the ordinary Zimbabwean who would want to utilize this platform to report corruption? Well, um, from from my uh, investigation with this app, I understand it has uh, two-way communication uh, authentication, should I say, which only allows only the sender and the receiver to be able to get whatever information is passed between those two channels. So there is no way that uh, any other third party can access that information that is being shared by the whistleblower. All right, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I think we have a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. We have a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. We have a lot of people who are yeah, no, no, this people all look on a civil, uh, also look to pillar is cut, is it? Uh, I call a whoopella lapa, Elizabeth, like it, but uh, what to as in the one is name is a sugar nail. So, he was a little lulung yelling in the lay of which young, it is a band to go to Bakwani, say, oh, Pumela Pandi, Bakulume, Mizindaba, as in Zagalayo, as in Kosarado, as in Zagalayo, and the one is church, nail. As well as the elites, the companies, the business, the money, the economy, the country. So, getting what is done is interesting, isn't it? See, so about the money, the car, and all that. The data, and just over, we have to change this. So, I'm a cell phone. I'm not sure who listens to who. We're going to have to have money. Basa seven salaries, and then we report it. In Costa Rica, we're going internet <laughs> be send the messages our be seven say internet for free without paying anything. Paying a patalanga good. Yeah, Konapa also po luna lulu witi emma panleni as equal is in the ways in jar. So you look to polo kuana mova in the ways in jarros to lagala go pelema to lopen uh lagwa my ama is in the ways in 
not go yonke indawo se sikhangela ke indaba si ngifisa ukuhlolisisa i app le kancane um sizwe u chairperson wezak ah u mamu Lois Matanda Moyo ese esiqhenya ngempela esisithi hi i app le wonke umuntu uzatholwa ithuba lokuyisebenzisa a reporting kuhla inkohlakalo eh esingathi ngesikhiwa anonymous ukuthi it's just between wena and jalo bona njengenhlanganiso yezakhi Eh uh, ubona ngani ukusetshenziswa kwemitshini yakho lezi nsuku ukuza siza na kulo ludubo ngaso sesikhangela lolo ludubo ukuthi abantu abaningi bakhanya ngani bayasaba ukureporti inkohlakalo ngenxa yokuthi kulezi into ezinengi ezenzakalayo for ukuthi abantu abareporti inkohlakalo elizwe Ya khona 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 lolo hlelo sibili luyasiza ngakhona lokho ukuthi eh luyanceda kakhulu khona pha ekuthini abantu bekukhona sokuphumela phandle bekhulume zonke i mhlawu be unkohlakalo ekhona ngaphandle lapha so ekukhulumeni khona phana mabe bephumela phandle bekhuluma inkohlakalo yonke enzakalayo ba protected abantu bavikelekile ngokuba eh uhlelo lolu kumbe ngithi platform le ekhona iyavikela ngendlela yokuthi ile 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 channel yokuthi abantu akulwa umuntu umuntu ongangenela enkulumeni kumbe ezintweni abantu ababezikhulumile beziveza ukuthi izinkohlakalo so kuyabe kuphela kuzwa kuziwa umuntu oyabe ethunyelwe leyo message kuphela so kahle kahle ukuthi uzulu kumele athembe ngempela ukuthi angasebenzisa le ndlela it's just okuphumayo it's between wena njalo abe enhlanganiso yezakhi yeah ayike ukuyinhlanganisa yezakha kuphela lawe oyabe reporta kuphela abanye laba abangazama ukungena ngaphakathi abangeke bekwanise ngoba lolo hlelo luvikelekile sini buyavikela abantu Michael Ngube technology expert hi standard ukubonga u Michael Ngube ngokungena kuhlelo uyasho ngempela ukuthi zulu kandaba trust 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 this platform would be very uh, uh for you to be able to for your information to get out there someone has to really really want it ngenxa yokuthi the way that the system is set up it's a, a conversation between you and Zach anonymously but now as we wrap up our conversation zulu kandaba i decided you know what let me showcase some zimbabwean talent uh, for those that have been watching comedy in Zimbabwe recently, uh, there's a young guy named Uvik Tampofu who does a lot of skits uh, whereby he pretty much uh, <laughs> imitates our president Emerson Mnangagwa. He recently did a skit on COVID-19. Uh, Vic Tampofu recently uh, spoke to Reuters and because of our relationship with Reuters, we were able uh, to show you uh, this clip. So let's head over to the conversation uh, that Victor had uh, whereby he's talking about his work I, and highlights what exactly inspires him as a young Zimbabwean to uh, partake in such a path. Let's head over to him. Hey, Yes, <laughs> What we're simply saying is there are problems, right? These problems, we highlight them through our, our content to say, what do you think about this? Do you think, do you feel we should continue going on like this? Do you think we have a solution to this? If, if there is a solution, what is the solution? And the more people comment, the more people react, the more we get also the basis for the next skit, the more we get the basis for the next content that we put out. Easy. Zilisefere, 
Oui, as your government, we will guard against external forces anything that try to hijack our revolution. It's, it's, it's even more difficult um, doing it, uh, like, you know, um, doing it because you have the fear of disappearing, you have the fear of being abducted. You don't know whether your content will touch on the right nerve or the wrong nerve. Right? So you always live in fear. We don't know what we put out there. We just uh, create the content and we put it out there. There's a government that is, is, is clueless in dealing with COVID-19 and that same economy. So it's important for us now to pack this into satire. Instead of them to drown into depression, to drown into stress, to drown into anxiety attacks, we give them humor that, you know, sometimes it's good to laugh. It, 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 the escape of, of, of laughter is, 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 is critical in, in times like this. We have heard your cries. Zimbabweans' lives matter. No, Pamabona. There are some people who are afraid to, to make jokes about the president. So after seeing such videos, they will be comfortable. I mean, it's part of democracy to satirize the president. So it's very important that he does what he does so that uh, we exercise our, our, uh, our constitutional rights in a democratic country. We don't really have that freedom. So I feel like satire is the only way to go because then you manage to bring out um, deep issues that are happening in the country and societies. The intention is one day maybe the message will, will lead um, to, 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 to something that is positive, that, that helps um, all the people as, as, as Zimbabweans. Zimbabwe is open for business. As a listening president, the voice of God is the voice of the people. I thank you. Anna Victor Mpofu of a comedy. Uh, he's using a comedy uh, to educate the world, to educate Zimbabweans on what's happening in their surroundings. He talks about COVID-19, the country's management of COVID-19. Talks about democracy. Talks about a lot of things there. Shout out to uh, Victor Mpofu for his uh, amazing work. We have come an, to an end of our program today. Just as a recap, COVID figures in Zimbabwe as we speak. 7,531 COVID cases, uh, uh, as uh, 224 dead, and approximately 5,700 have recovered. Coronavirus. We also touched on the uh, Zach's move of introducing an online whistleblower platform. Let's meet same time, same place here on the connection. Pano Panepenuro, yes, Studio Seven. And open Kuoneka in Mfaro. Dini when you mic over, Muria Zimbabwe. Bye bye. Shh. <sighs>